Welcome to another day in Charleston. Well, today we were gonna go to the beach early this morning, but the thing is it rained last night and it's still cloudy, so we don't know if it's gonna rain or not. So we decided we're gonna go to the, where are we going, Mom? <laughs> we're going to the visitor center. We're going to the visitor center we're and we're gonna get our pass to the multi-pass for different museums. It's pointed at you. Historic. Why are you looking? Because he was way over there. No, it's over here. No, it's not. I'm not even pointing it at you. Yeah, that's what I thought I was getting into the picture. <laughs> Sorry. And museums and art museums and possibly plantations. So yeah, we're gonna go sign up for that. It's like a three day thing and so we'll go do a couple of those things while we wait for the for the clouds to clear up and hopefully maybe a little bit in the afternoon we'll go to the beach but other than that wait isn't the ghost tour also today nice. yeah we're also going to be going on to a ghost tour the last one we did here it was a gravestone i mean graveyard like tour ghost tour and then this, today today we're going to be doing a like a prison cell ghost tour which they say that if you bring stuff with you that's valuable you'll end up losing it during so I'm gonna leave all my rings and bracelets and my wallet back at the room so yeah other than that we're just waiting for the bus to go to the tour and so I'll get, talk to you guys a little later bye Java chip, which is basically like a coffee ice cream with chocolate chips. The thing is, like my friends, they know that I'm actually a hyperactive person, so I really shouldn't be eating anything with coffee. So, let's see how oh, it's melting. Let's see how this turns out.
Charleston. And they were watching the Patriots very closely, knowing that they wanted to turn the colonies into their own country. And they were watching one of the leaders, Isaac Hayne. He was in town picking up supplies one day, and they summoned him. They wanted to talk to him, so he went to see what they wanted. Well, they wanted him to sign a letter saying he wouldn't fight against them. He didn't want to sign that letter, but back home he had a wife and seven children. And his wife and two of his children had smallpox, and he didn't expect it. 1773, they only threw a couple boxes of tea into the harbor. The rest was eventually sold off for the Patriot cause. If you would like to walk over and go up the stairs and check out that, um, um, there's some mannequins in there. <laughs> you have a secret moment. I promise you nothing will jump out. It's just a display showing you. There would have been a window on that side. And they would have, this wall would have been bricked. So while the Patriots were being held down here, the British had no idea there was 14,000 pounds, about 14,000 pounds of ammunition on the other side of that wall. After that was all said and done and the British were gone, there was still about 10,000 pounds of salvageable ammunition down there. Journey ahead of you. Please come into my garden. I'd like to make you some refreshments before you move on. He goes into the garden. He's waiting a while, and pretty soon she comes out with a pot of tea and a cup, and she pours him a cup of tea. Now, this guy didn't like tea, but she was being very accommodating, very friendly. In fact, he felt a bit too forward for a married woman. And he could see her husband, John, watching him in the shadows. And he was trying to figure out how he was going to get out of drinking that tea without insulting her or maybe making John angry. All of a sudden, she excuses herself, and she goes into the inn, and he sees John follow her. So it's a no-brainer. He takes a cup of tea, and he pours it out into a plant, not knowing it was tainted. And he sets it back on the table. Now she comes out, she sees the empty cup. So she sees opportunity, they can rob him. And she figures he drank it, he's gonna go belly up. So she said, I have great news for you. A room just opened up. So he said, okay. Now she takes him to the room and he's not feeling all warm and fuzzy. He didn't wanna get in that bed. So he decided to read a book for a while. All of a sudden he hears a loud crash. He jumps up and hear the bed had opened up and under the bed was a pit and there was John with a knife ready to finish him off. He ran out of the inn, he got on his horse, he came into town and informed authorities of what was going on and they went out to investigate and arrested them and took them to the old city jail on Magazine Street. Now while they were there they tried to escape. John tied blankets together. He lowered himself out the window first. The blankets tore so he couldn't get Lavinia out. Fearing they would hang her without trial, he went back to jail. Now legend continues to say they were tried here and when they were sentenced to be hanged, it said that they were taken back to that jail yard to be hanged. She would wear her bride gown so that the crowd would take pity on her. And they also say she uttered the words, if anyone has a message for the devil, give it to me and I'll carry it for you. And when they were buried, the only graveyard that would accept them was a Unitarian graveyard buried a few plots away from the judge that condemned them to death. Now that's a little bit of a legend. Believe me, there's everybody's own take on it. And there's so many stories out there, you can't keep up with it. Anyways, that's the end of another day of Charleston. I'm just really tired right now because I walked through the ocean a lot against the waves and so my legs are tired and I walked around a lot. And while at the beach, I think I might have touched a jellyfish because I was kind of like letting myself float in the water while using my arms to kind of get myself along and all of a sudden I thought I felt something kind of wrap around my right and left arm and it kind of gave me like a sting and then when I woke stood up I felt it on my left leg too and next thing I know five to ten minutes later I saw little red dots showing up on the parts where I thought I got stung and so and later on my parents said the same thing happened to them so and I went for the ghost tour and I liked it but the thing is when we went down to the jail cell uh, mom and her daughter were kind of saying that they felt suddenly cold and I was trying to tell them that when they suddenly feel cold, it's usually the presence of a ghost. And the next thing I know, I felt a breeze kind of like coming at me, kind of like, almost kind of like someone was blowing at my face, kind of like down like this and along my right side of my neck. Thing is, it was humid down, and so it, it felt 
pretty good so instead of freaking out I kind of just like raised my hand in the direction where it was coming from and kind of like thanked the ghost because I was I was just hot I was tired yeah so I end up trust me if you think 90 degree like over 90 degree weather is bad in them during the day it's just as bad during the night <laughs> but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys tomorrow we're gonna be doing a lot more walking around so again good night and see you in the morning bye